In just 15 minutes, cataract surgery can take your eyesight from looking like this to this. I'm Dr. Thomas Ho, I'm a board certified ophthalmologist. In today's video, I'm going to be discussing everything you need to know about cataract and cataract surgery. So what exactly is a cataract? A cataract is a clouding of the natural lens of your eye. When you're younger, this lens is nice and clear, and it allows light to focus properly onto the retina, giving you a nice sharp vision. But as you get older and the cataract forms, the lens becomes cloudy. This makes it more difficult for light to pass through. As a result, your vision can become dim, blurry, or even take on a yellowish hue. Because cataracts form slowly, you might not even notice the cataracts forming. Day-to-day -day tasks like reading or driving may become increasingly more difficult and eventually even impossible to do. Cataracts are the leading cause of blindness worldwide, but it is also both treatable and curable. In most patients, cataracts develop as a result of aging. However, it's important to remember that other factors like diabetes, excessive exposure to UV light, a history of trauma, medication use like steroids, and smoking can all contribute to the formation of cataracts. So what are the symptoms of cataracts, or how do you know if you might be developing them? Some of the most common symptoms include blurring or clouding of your vision, difficulty seeing at night, light sensitivity or glare, especially while driving, fading or yellowing of colors, or frequent changes in glasses prescription. If you're experiencing these symptoms, it's important to get your eyes checked so that your doctor can evaluate and see if you have cataracts or if something else might be contributing to your symptoms. Now let's talk about available treatment options. The only definitive treatment option for a cataract is cataract surgery. During surgery, the cloudy lens will be broken down to small fragments and then removed through a process called phacal emulsification. The cloudy lens is then replaced with a clear artificial lens called an intraocular lens implant, or IOL. Now, if you're scared about surgery, just remember, more than 3 million cataract surgeries are performed each year in the United States, and more than 20 million surgeries are performed worldwide. That's more people than the entire state of New York. Cataract surgery remains one of the most commonly and successfully performed procedures to date. You don't have to have surgery if you don't want to, as it's an elective procedure. However, your vision won't improve until you do. If you decide that you're ready for cataract surgery, then the next step is to come for your preoperative assessment. During this visit, your doctor will take multiple measurements of your eye, including the shape, the length, the total refractive power, and also evaluate the health of the retina. It's important to come to this visit with some idea about what your refractive goals are. This is a combination of both your visual needs, but also lifestyle preferences. Your surgeon will ask you specifically about what activities you have a hard time with, whether it's reading, driving, or even golf. Your surgeon will want to know, as this will help determine what type of lens is recommended to you to best suit your personal needs. Next, we're going to be talking about the different lens options. The first lens is called a monofocal lens, also known as the standard or basic lens. This lens is the most commonly implanted lens of all the available options because it's the most cost effective. Your insurance will cover this type of lens implant. It provides great single vision correction. For most patients, they choose to have their distance vision corrected, so they don't need glasses when driving or going outside. It also has the lowest risk of side effects like glares or halos. The only drawback is that you will need reading glasses when having this type of lens implant. For patients who don't want to wear glasses after having cataract surgery, then the multifocal lens is the best option for you. This lens will give you the greatest range and vision of all the lenses available. From distance to the intermediate to the near range, this lens can do it all. However, it's considered a premium lens option, and so your insurance will not cover the cost of the lens. The price will vary from place to place, but you can expect to spend several thousand dollars for this type of lens. This lens also has the highest risk of side effects like glares or halos. Lastly, you need to consider that not everyone is a candidate for this type of lens. If you have any sort of retinal pathology, such as macular degeneration, you will not be a candidate for a multifocal lens. The next type of lens I want to discuss is called an extended depth of focus lens or EDOF. This will give you what's called blended vision. It will give you a range of vision from the distance through the intermediate range. 
At the near range, you'll be okay seeing larger print, but for smaller, finer print, you're still going to need your reading glasses. And so the range of the EDOF lens is not quite as good as that of the multifocal lens. However, it's significantly better than that of the standard monofocal lens. The main draw and appeal of the EDOF lens is that it has less risk of side effects like glares or halos when compared to the multifocal lens. This makes it a great option for someone that either lives an active lifestyle or drives a lot. The other thing to consider is that the EDOF lens is also more forgiving, and so it's more suitable for more patients than the multifocal lens. So while you might not be a candidate for a multifocal lens, you still might be a great candidate for an extended depth of focus lens. As far as the cost goes, this is considered a premium lens option. So again, your insurance will not cover the cost of the lens. From my experience, the cost of the EDOF lens is typically the same as that of the multifocal lens. If you have astigmatism, you may need what's called a torque lens. So what is astigmatism? Astigmatism is when the shape of the surface of your eye is not perfectly spherical like a basketball, but instead shaped more like football. This can cause light rays entering your eye to focus at different points onto your retina. As a result, images can appear blurry. All the lens options discussed in today's video come in a toric variant. Your surgeon will let you know if this is a recommended option for you. The last type of lens I want to discuss is called a light adjustable lens. This is the newest but also most expensive lens option. With the light adjustable lens, after a lens is implanted inside your eye, your surgeon will use a light to adjust the refractive power of the lens. Once the lens has been adjusted to your exact needs, it can be treated again with light to permanently lock in the power of the lens. However, it's important to remember that this type of lens option is considered a monofocal lens, and so if you want a range of vision, you'll need to opt for what's called monovision, where one eye will be corrected for distance and the other eye will be corrected either at the intermediate or near range. Now to discuss the two methods of doing cataract surgery. First, we have the traditional routine method, and then we have the newer femtho laser assisted cataract surgery, also called FLAX. During the traditional cataract surgery, the entire surgery is done by hand. During laser assisted cataract surgery, a femtho second laser is used to assist with certain steps of routine cataract surgery. The laser can also be used to pre soften the cataract, making removal of the cataract easier. This may reduce inflammation and swelling, but it may also shorten recovery time. The laser can also be used to correct small amounts of astigmatism. The steps performed by laser can make the overall surgery slightly more precise than that of the traditional method. Both methods of cataract surgery are great and can have fantastic visual outcomes. The main difference really will come down to the cost, as your insurance will only cover the cost of traditional cataract surgery. For my patients, I typically recommend flax if either one, they're opting for a premium lens option, as this can help with lens centration, or two, if they have certain eye conditions, such as Fuchs and the theory dystrophy, as I want to make sure I use as little energy as possible when removing the cataract. Regardless of which method you choose, either traditional versus flax, it's important to remember that the most important factor in determining your visual outcome is the lens implant that you choose. While cataract surgery is largely considered a very safe and low risk procedure, it's still surgery, and so there are risks. This includes infection in the eye, bleeding in the eye, swelling of the cornea or retina, retinal detachment, permanent drooping of the eyelid, need for additional surgery, loss of some or all your vision. More minor risks include dry eyes, mild persistent inflammation, and the formation of what's called a secondary cataract, also known as posterior capsule pacification. So what can you expect on the day of surgery? Most surgeries take place in an outpatient surgery center. So on the day of surgery, you'll come in, an IV will be placed, dialing drops will be placed inside the operating eye. Afterwards, you'll be brought back to the operating room. There, the eye will be cleaned, a drape will be placed over your face, and an eyelid speculum will be used to help keep your eye open. You'll receive a combination of both local anesthesia and conscious sedation. This will help you keep you relaxed and pain-free during surgery. Surgery typically will last anywhere between 10 to 20 minutes. During surgery, it's important to stay relaxed, but also to keep talking and movements to a minimum. Once the surgery is done, a clear eye shield will be placed over your eye and you will be taken back to the recovery area. Once the sedation has worn off, you will be able to go home the same day. 
Most patients experience improved vision within a couple days of surgery. After cataract surgery, it's normal to experience mild discomfort, itching, or even sensitivity to light. Your doctor will prescribe you a series of eye drops that will help control the inflammation, but also help prevent infection. This will include a steroid drop, a non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drop, and an antibiotic drop. Other steps you can follow to help ensure a smooth recovery after surgery include, one, no touching, rubbing, or pressing on the eye. Two, make sure to wear the eye shield at bedtime for one week after surgery. This helps ensure that there's no inadvertent touching or rubbing that may occur while you're asleep. Three, no heavy lifting or strenuous activity for one week. Four, no water directly in the eye for one week. If you need to shower, shower from the neck down. For my patients that want to swim, I usually recommend taking at least two weeks off. Number five, follow your doctor's order regarding drop usage. Number six, make sure you attend all your post-operative visits with your doctor. And lastly, number seven, do not compare your experience with cataract surgery to someone else. Everyone's experience is different and comparing may only make you unnecessarily worry. There are certain signs and symptoms that are considered emergencies after having cataract surgery. This includes severe nausea, vomiting, or pain, vision that got better and suddenly worse, or total vision loss, new onset of flashes or floaters, severe eye redness or discharge, or haziness and cloudiness of the eye. If you're experiencing any of these symptoms, then please contact your doctor immediately. And that's it. That's everything you need to know about cataract surgery. If you found this video helpful, please make sure to like and subscribe for more content. If you've already had cataract surgery, please drop a comment down below, as I'd love to hear directly from you about your own experience with the surgery. That's all I have for today. We'll see you in the next one.